I'm going to bring this word. It's not going to take me long. <laughs> I'm going to take my time. It's just not going to take me long. But I'm going to take. I don't think I've ever rushed at ABC, have I? I've been places where they've rushed me. <laughs> Amen. Y'all know some of y'all was there. <laughs> Amen. And AdamandBeliever.com forward slash always remember dot P D F. Look at somebody and say, always remember. Always remember. We are human and God knows it. You think God doesn't know what he made? God made provision through Jesus Christ because he knows exactly what he made. He knew what would happen to what he made if they disobeyed. So he had a plan arranged for the disobedience of man. He knew man was subject to disobedience because the angels were subject to it too and they had, all, had already disobeyed. That's how we got the one in the garden leading man astray. Amen. I know a lot of people like to believe that angels don't have a will, but that would defy, uh, uh, that would defy God and his purpose for creation. Angels have a will and they can disobey. That's why we have a devil. Amen. That's why we have demons and fallen angels and all of those different things because God is God. So he gives his beings wills. Even your dog can disobey. Amen. Amen. They'll do it. Might get kicked like my daddy said, keep. But they can disobey. Yeah, a dog. So creation can do that. So God made us knowing that we had the propensity to disobey. So he made a way for us to still be with him. Now that's love. Amen. You don't throw your children out because they mess up. Now, of course, if they refuse to live by your rules and all of that, it's time to go. Amen. Lick a stamp, stick it on their back and ship them off. Yeah. Yeah, but they may love being there, but they make mistakes and they do things wrong sometimes. But they're still your children. And that's how we are to God. We're important. Look at somebody say, you're important to God. It's so funny how down through the years, the church, the world, everybody has made God into this almost evil existence. Evil man who's trying to kill everybody. When in actuality, he's trying to save everybody. In actuality, he's trying to save us all through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son in his form that came down. So, amen. Look at somebody and say, always remember. We have an advocate with the Father, God, that if we sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. Y'all happy about that, right? Yeah. An advocate is somebody that pleads your case. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. So when you trap in the spirit of dumb, uh. that spirit exists. Yeah. Yeah. Trapped in the spirit of dumb and boneheadedness. Yeah. Yeah. When you were hard-headed, when you wouldn't listen, God didn't throw you away, Jesus appeared before God and began to plead your case. And he don't have to say much. All he has to do is show his hands and feet. However, this advocate was provided by the decision that God made to come in the form of man and pay the penalty of sin. For us, God became man in the form of his son. Amen. And we ain't discussing that part because that part our minds don't understand. You would have to have a four dimensional, five, six, maybe even eight dimensional understanding to understand the Godhead and the Trinity. When we try to explain it, it causes division because it's beyond our understanding. How can God? come down as his son and die for us and still be God in heaven. 
Look at somebody and say, I don't want to understand. I just want to believe. I just want to believe. I don't need to understand that. My mind can't handle that. I just believe it. I believe this passage when they all showed up at the baptism of Jesus. Everybody showed up. How can one show up as three and still be one? And talk to each other. And then God did something even greater than that. He spoke and everybody around heard it. He said, behold, my son, who I'm pleased with. And everybody's like, okay. But no speakers back then. Who said that? Jesus in the water, the dove, Holy Spirit coming down. Man, that, oh, that was something to see. But our minds can't understand it. Like old folks say, we'll understand it better by and by. Amen. But the by and by is if you live right and you make it in. Amen. You'll make it into that great by and by. Amen. First John 2 and 1, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye what? Sin. So sin, look at somebody say sin not. sin not. So just take sin out your plan. Yeah. We're going to stop sinning. Just take that out. And don't try to use sin as a crutch where well, we all make mistakes. Well, try not to. Can you try not to? Hey, when people do that. Before you finna do it, I will. I'm not perfect. You ain't done it yet. I know, but Friday's coming. But you can. Something's wrong. Hey, don't make plans to do it. First John 2 and 1, my little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Someone to plead our case. Jesus Christ is that advocate, the righteous. Amen? The wages of sin is death, but God has gifted us eternal life. Anybody got eternal life? Amen. We can be forgiven and saved from eternal punishment if we confess our sins and believe on Christ. Amen? Romans 10 and 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And you know, this scripture is not a one-time thing. You don't come sit in the chair at the, at the Baptist church and do this. Amen. I'm using the Baptist church because they're the ones with the chair. They bring the chair out and everybody sitting. you sit in the chair and everybody come and give you the right hand of fellowship because getting saved and joining the church and all that was rolled into the same ceremony. And so it's not a one-time thing that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. This is something you got to keep doing. Amen. Amen. See, to really know you saved, you're going to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. You're going to confess with your mouth to the folks you used to sin with. Amen. See, somebody's like, well, no, you're supposed to say that to God. No, you're supposed to say that to everybody. You're supposed to say that to everyone. Everyone should know you saved. You don't get around sinners and get scared. Amen. And listen, the sinners want God more than the world makes you think. The world makes it look like Christianity is crazy and everybody is against it. Just like they make you think everybody's gay. They make you think everywhere you go, you're going to see a gay person when in actuality, most places you go, you're not going to see one because there's not that many. You might not ever see a transgender. It's just not that many, but they make it like there's one every three people. Yeah, that's that's their illusion. That's that's their amplification with social media and different things. They are able to amplify the lies. So they make you think. That Christianity is down, it's trending down, and nobody wants it. 
But when folks are really in trouble, they want the help of Jesus. And if you come to them and mention Jesus to them, you'll be surprised the reaction you get. Amen. We were just at the um, pancake house the other, the other day with uh, Sister Rache and yes, pancakes, Riasha. Oh boy, that omelet. Mm. When they bake in the oven and it rises up. I love stuff that rises up. Y'all getting hungry? Okay. Anyway, we were there the other morning and our waiter, he came up and just, I mean, he was just crying. Just, just crying. He's like, I'm okay. And he said, first he said it was the pollen or whatever. And then he said, but you know, I just, he was just crying. So he got our orders all messed up or whatever, whatever. And he just having a, just the, the, the worst day ever. And his, the manager came out, another lady came out and they were trying to explain for him. He's really good with it, but we've had him before. So we know he's good. You know, I, I know folks where I go. I love to know the folks that's cooking my food. Amen. Amen. My daddy used to be like that. He would almost walk in the kitchen when we go in restaurants. <laughs> He'd always, didn't he? he always do, do, do the managers, whatever. So I'm like that too. So I was looking for, the, you know, talking to the manager, telling him, they was like, yeah, he's in a bad day. All our food was messed up, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's time for the check. They had discounted our check 50%, taking everything off. So Holy Spirit just told me, say, just go on and give him the money back. So I get whatever they discounted, I gave it back to him in a, in a tip. And he looked at it and he just started crying. And he walked off, so I went to the restroom. When I came back, he walked up to me. And he said, man, I can't believe you did that. My service was so bad. I said, well, what's going on? Like, are you okay? And he began to kind of tell me some things that went on that week or whatever, whatever. I said, well, hey, man, I'm a minister. I bring Jesus. That's what I have. He broke down crying, put his arms around me. Got my phone number, said, I got to work this Sunday, but I'm coming to the church. Now, the news would tell you and social media tell you that Jesus, now you say that, you might get, no. Yeah. Folks want the truth. Yeah. The world is suppressing it because Jesus is the answer yeah. for the world today. Yeah. Above him, there's no other. Jesus yeah. is the way. He's the way. So you need to start letting let folks know. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. That's who say. Not if you say it in private. You got to say it in public. Make it known. And ain't it funny how every witch, warlock, and demon, they, they'll let you know what they're about. Walk up to you looking crazy, putting stuff on you. Oh, don't come over here because I worship grass. <laughs> well, I know you smoke it. <laughs> and, they, and no shame whatsoever. Hoochie Mama will wear her stink body out all day for everybody to see. <laughs> Amen. Gay dude almost dislocated his hip. Trying to walk like a walk. Just switch, switch so hard you broke it. They want you to know. Don't they want you to know? There's one dude, he was so gay. We used to go to Cheesecake Factory. This is the gayest dude ever. He's, 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 the, he's the queen. Is there an award? This dude. If you was there for an hour, every time he'd come and talk to you, he'd go in the back and change his hair. <laughs> He'll go in the back, come back, dreads. <laughs> go in the back, come back, beehive. <laughs> go in the back, come back, afro. <laughs> go in the back, the la no, that's, that's, that's the finale, ponytails. <laughs> States, you remember him? See, folks, he's famous. He's famous. He would change his every time. Dude, you in a restaurant. First of all, I want you back there messing with your hair. Quit fiddling around with your head back in the back and you messing with my phone.
A lot of y'all act like y'all have encountered him. He, I'm telling you, he's famous. He's still there? Oh, Lord. Somebody gonna go to Cheesecake Factory today just to get a upload a viral video. Oh, y'all, he changed it five. His record is five now, five. Amen. But yeah, so, you know, they don't, they don't have a problem with you knowing. So why do we have a problem with people knowing? You'd be surprised you mentioned Jesus. Folks will have questions for you. Amen. Everybody's not an atheist. Most folks aren't. Everybody's not a, in the witchcraft. Most folks aren't. Everyone's not a Hebrew Israelite. Very few are. The ones you see, that's all of them. Nobody want to be that. That's stupid. I'm not being nothing stupid. But <laughs> confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. Our ability to be washed, regenerated, and reborn came with a heavy cost. We cannot take it lightly that Jesus endured pain like no other man in order to atone for our evil deeds and sinful nature. Pain like no other man. Isaiah 52 says it like this. For many the servant of God became an object of horror. Speaking of our Savior. Many were astonished at him. They couldn't believe what they saw. His face and his whole appearance were marred more than any man's. And his form beyond that of the sons of men. But just as many were astonished at him. Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, and it was recorded by Luke, a physician, who was a doctor, that his sweat fell to the ground as drops of blood. Luke 22 and 44 says, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. This was not just a metaphor for heavy sweating. Because it is possible for a person to sweat blood. If they are experiencing high levels of anguish and pain, which Jesus was experiencing. Matthew 26 and 38. Then he said to them, my soul is very sad and deeply grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow. This is how he felt. So he said, stay here and keep awake. And keep watch with me. Hematiorosis is a condition that causes the blood vessels surrounding the sweat glands to rupture, which can cause blood to effuse into the sweat glands. Hematiorosis is caused by extreme anguish. And this is what he was saying in the garden, Mark 14. He said, Abba Father, all things are possible unto you. So is there another way? Can another, can we do this another way? He said, if it's possible, take away this cup from me. But then he said, nevertheless, not what I will, but what I wilt. This is the state of kenosis. Jesus entered into the ultimate state of human living, which is Kenosis, that's when our will is completely emptied out for the will of God. That's what kenosis is. But he said, man, is there, God, is there any other way? Why was, say, why was he saying that? Because even though he was God in the form of his son, he was also a human. Now, can you imagine? He's God and he's human. He came as a human to be a human sacrifice to atone for the sins of all men. An animal's blood could not sacrifice and our blood could not save us and keep us alive because we are sinners. Yeah. Hebrews 10 and 4, for is, 
is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Jesus had to be the sacrifice to pay the penalty because he was God, he was human, and he was sinless. Amen? He was the perfect sacrifice. But this was not easy to endure. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. So the reason he had to be beaten and ended up looking the way he looked was he had to represent our sin. That's what our sin looks like. So the sins of man were cast up on him physically and spiritually for him to take it on to die for it as God and this is see we don't think about this but if he was God and man as God he knew all that was going to happen to him this is why he was praying God there has to be is there another way because he could foresee everything that was going to happen. He knew all that was going to happen to him and exactly how painful it was going to be. He knew he would be betrayed by his closest friends. A lot of folks like to say Judas, but all of them did. Yeah, they, Peter, when he was warming himself by the fire, betrayed him. No, I don't know him. They scattered when he was arrested Judah was the, uh, Judas was the worst but all of them abandoned him so he, but he knew that was coming can you imagine him having to teach these guys and love these guys knowing that they would do that but he knew how painful it was going to be he knew he would be betrayed by his closest friends given over to his enemies to be flogged, spit on, beaten, mocked, and then have painful nails driven into his hands and feet. They say crucifixion is the worst, most the goriest form of death back in that day. And it was only for the people that were totally despised. People that were degenerates. The worst of the worst deserved it, according to those times. John 18 and 4. Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them whom seek ye. Now this is his humanness walking up to the people looking for him knowing everything that was going to happen to him and he still went and surrender to be taken captive. You know why? Because in that moment, he thought of you. He thought of me. He thought of all of us. He thought of our children. He thought of generations to come. I have to do this. He turned himself in. As a human, he would experience all of the pain and suffer all of the torture and feel it all without any divine intervention. The angels wouldn't save him and God had to turn away to not see his sinless son covered in our sins and iniquity. Back of 1 and 13, thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil and canst not look on Iniquity. Summary. <laughs> Jesus endured excruciating pain. The word excruciating was created because there was no other word that could be used to describe the pain that Jesus endured. I just learned this. Excruciating actually means from the cross. Wow. 
In his humanness, he felt abandoned and neglected to the point of crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Nevertheless, his blood had to be spilled and he had to be the sacrifice for us or there would be no life for us after death. We are all guilty and need forgiveness of our sins. Amen. This is why we must never forget. Look at somebody and say, never forget. We must never forget what Jesus did for us. But the real question is, how can we forget when we should be calling upon him daily to forgive us and be our advocate? Remember that old song, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Y'all remember that? Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No. And then, remember they say, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget? All right, y'all, stop. Come on, the old saints know it. We the old saints now. How can I forget? Yeah, we need to bring them songs back. Man. Because we don't need to forget. How can we? How can you forget? If you need to call on him daily to forgive you and be an advocate daily. We cannot ascribe to doctrines that diminish the death of Jesus or frustrate the grace that his trials provide. Amen. Don't come talking to me about no religion that diminishes what Jesus did. Don't come telling me about what Farrakhan said about Jesus because he don't believe in the blood atonement of Jesus. Don't come telling me about what some Hebrew Israelite said on the corner downtown because they believe it's in a works-based gospel. They diminish. Works-based gospels diminish the crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. It's not in our power. If it was in our power, he wouldn't have had to die. Amen. So I don't care how good you live. You ain't going nowhere without the blood of Jesus. I don't care what commandments you obey. You're going nowhere without the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that saves us. Amen. So we can't ascribe to doctrines that diminish the death of Jesus or frustrate the grace that his trials provided. We must live like we are saved from sin by avoiding sin altogether. We must live like we are worthy of his sacrifice by loving others and laying down our lives for them like he did. Amen. Quit saying you're saved if you ain't going to stop sinning. Quit saying you're saved if you ain't going to love one another. Can I keep preaching in here? We must thank him daily for what he did for us and present our bodies as what? As what? Living sacrifices. Now, this is something that he provided. He died so we can present our bodies as living sacrifices. Do you really understand what that means? If he hadn't died, then we'd have to die to be a sacrifice. Then the sacrifice wouldn't have been good because we died with sin. He came so that we can present ourselves to him a living sacrifice. Amen. We must thank him daily for what he did for us. And present our bodies as living sacrifices to him. Because of the price he paid for them. Never. Look at somebody and say never. Never Never forget what the Lord God has done for you. Always remember. Amen. Always remember. Matthew 27 and 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him 
the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment back on him and led him away to crucify him. And they crucified him and parted his garment, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the scepter or the, uh, the tomb dresses. And behold, there was a what? <laughs> Some of y'all watch too many Marvel movies and comics and Y'all just don't understand. The Bible said there was a great earthquake because the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came, let me show you this right here, rolled back the stone from the door and then what? <laughs> that is so gangster. Roll the stone and sat on it. Like, that's all you got, death? Like, death, really? Like, really? Really? Sat on it! <laughs> the Bible said, y'all thought Raiden was bad. The Bible said his countenance was like what? Lightning! And his raiment white as snow. <laughs> now the gods... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad I wasn't working that day. <laughs> and for fear of him, the keepers, the Bible said they started to shake and die. <laughs> Became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know why you're here. And I know what you came to see. He said, but I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. But he is not here. He is not here. For he is what? He is risen. As he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, he is risen. And always remember. Everyone stand to your feet. Come on, PJ, turn that up. Always remember Jesus, Jesus. keep them on your mind come on and sing that with me close your eyes come on always remember Jesus Jesus always remember Jesus
Hallelujah. He died to save us. Jesus. Jesus. He died to save us. Jesus. Jesus. Always. Always keep. Hallelujah. I just want to take this time. Just lift your hands and we're just going to remember who we used to be, who we were, what we used to do, where we used to go, how bad things were, what we were into, how we thought there'd be just no hope, the bad choices, bad decisions, things were so bad. We thought we had messed everything up. But Jesus came. Save you from all of that. Transform your life and give you hope with a future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always read. Jesus, Jesus, always remember Jesus, Jesus, always keep him on your mind. Turn that, PJ. Always keep him on your mind. Always keep him on your mind. Always, always keep him on your mind. Always keep him. Always keep him on your mind. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for all you've done when we were castaways when we felt our world was over, there was no reason for us to go on. Father God, when we were at our lowest point, you came and rescued us. The precious blood of Jesus washed us, cleansed us, and gave us another chance. So right now we say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the death, for the burial, for the resurrection. Thank you, Father God, for taking our lives, cleaning us up. Thank you for where you've planted us, where you've placed us, the people you've brought in our lives to help us. Father, all you've done through the death of your son, making provision that we can be reinstated into your kingdom and be with you when you come back for us. We say thank you. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Always keep him on your mind. Come on, sing that. Always. Always keep him on your mind. Hallelujah. Always keep him on your mind. Don't forget Jesus and the Christ today. Always keep him on your mind. Give us for being too busy sometimes, Lord. Say always, always keep him First and the last, the Alpha and Omega. Always keep in love. You have our hearts, oh Lord. Always keep one more time. We worship you alone. We worship you. Say your name. Always keep in love. 
Hallelujah. 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 Come on and put your hands together. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, there's no sin that God can't forgive. If you need forgiveness for sin and you want to be saved, I'm just going to open it up. Just come on up here and we're just going to trust and believe God with you. That if you believe on him, you will be saved. Anyone? Hallelujah. Come on up. Hallelujah. Come on, J. Brian. Hallelujah. Always keep him on your mind. Just ask him for forgiveness. Accept him in your heart. On your mind. Hallelujah. So while you're up here, just ask him for forgiveness. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. I accept you in my heart. I've accepted you before, but God, I'm accepting you again. Whatever the sin is, remove it from my life. I set it aside so that I can live for you. Live in freedom. Father God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Always keep him on your mind. Come on, PJ, sing that song. Always keep him on your mind. He loves you so always. Always keep him on. The blood of Jesus proves his love for us. Always keep it on. Always keep it There's no valley that his blood cannot reach you. Always keep it on. Always keep it on. the mountain his blood can reach you there too. Always keep Always keep it on. And Father God, we come just as humans that you have elected to offer salvation to we accept it God we accept your salvation plan we accept the blood of Jesus to cover and wash us clean from our sins and I pray Father everyone that came up Lord all their sins be forgiven in the name of Jesus whatever it is they struggle with whatever it is the enemy does whatever it is we believe total freedom in the name of Jesus by the blood that makes us whole in Jesus name we pray thank you Lord hallelujah hallelujah always always Come on, everybody, let's sing that. Always, always sing that. Always keep Come on and give God some praise. In you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may go to your seats. Hallelujah. Thank God for the altar where we bring our sins and leave our sins. Hallelujah. And you never know what folks are struggling. You never know what the devil is doing to folks. You don't know. 
all you gotta do is remember when it was you. Hallelujah. So don't forget. Look at somebody and say, always remember. Always remember. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.